regulators should focus their attention completely on Du Quan. Instead, they are becoming distracted by their blather about Kim Kardashian. Welcome to CryptoLink channel. If you love getting news and updates about cryptocurrency, join our community by subscribing to our channel. You can tap the bell icon to never miss our new videos. If you enjoy our channel, kindly like and share it with your friends. October 15, 2022. Cointelegraph tweeted. Duquan or Kim Kardashian? The SEC might want to get its priorities straight here. The passport of Duquan, the founder of Terraform Labs, will expire in less than a week. The South Korean government is said to have blocked Kwan's properties this month after Interpol filed a red alert for him last month. In case you missed the news last September 26, 2022. According to reports, Du Quan has been placed under red notice by Interpol, calling for his arrest. In response to allegations Kwan is facing in South Korea for the demise of the Terra environment, the International Police Group issued the warning, according to South Korean prosecutors in Seoul who spoke to Bloomberg on Monday. The information was released just one week after prosecutors of South Korea allegedly requested Interpol to file Kwan a red notice on September 19. Kwan has been openly denying the claims in his tweets in response. He stated in one message, I do not really know whose funds they've detained, but excellent for them, hopefully they utilize it for good. Kwan appears to be leading a free environment while using his internet connection, conducting a cat and mouse game with both the government and the general public. Kim Kardashian as well as other celebrities have come under harsh criticism from the US Securities and Exchange Commission for endorsing a variety of cryptocurrency projects. Corrupt individuals like Kwan persist in avoiding the reach of regulatory organizations despite the fact that they need to be condemned. The iceberg's tip is Kim Kardashian's promotion of cryptocurrency. After endorsing Ethereum Max Emax on her Instagram profile, Kardashian assured the SEC she would pay a $1.26 million compensation. The reality star was properly punished since she lied about receiving $250,000 to promote the shitcoin, which fell 98% immediately after her endorsement. She admitted receiving payment but did not specify how much. Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, declared after the court's decision that this incident serves as a warning that simply because a celebrity or other influential person recommends a certain investment opportunity, such as crypto asset securities, doesn't indicate that other investors should make the same choice. The case served as a reminder to famous people and other groups of people that they are legally required to tell the public when and for what amount they are paid to advocate investment in securities. Nice words, for sure. However, Gensler's performance and wrist-slapping of famous people is an example of style above substance. The objectives of regulatory agencies are obviously skewed, but it is important that obvious pump-and-dump scams be not left unpunished. The SEC should be furious because there are far larger fish in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. The harm created by Du Quan. It's not good for cryptocurrency that Kardashian is promoting EMAX, and the SEC was correct to punish her. However, it still is minor compared to the harm caused by Kwan, in which SEC failed to address. Over the span of a week in May, the market lost approximately $50 billion due to stablecoin of Terraform and its cryptocurrency, Luna, collapsing. Luna was among the top 10 biggest cryptocurrencies until its fall. Kwan and his business received their first subpoena from the SEC in 2021. In response, Kwan, very much the anti-authoritarian, said he wouldn't follow the instructions and would rather sue the SEC. Despite the fact that his countersuit had little success, it vividly illustrated his disrespect for the agency. It appears now that Kwan has been forgotten by the SEC Interpol's Red Alert for Kwan, a formal directive to law enforcement agencies throughout the world to find and apprehend the wanted individual, was issued by South Korea and not the US. It appears that the SEC has delegated responsibility to Interpol and South Korea. Even the lawmakers in the US and others have yet to classify digital assets, the agency is instead targeting companies like Coinbase and Ripple. Kwan's mischief goes much beyond quantitative analysis. It cost individuals their lives in certain instances.
Uncertainty fueled by dubious and illegal individuals is the very last thing we want during this turbulent time for the international markets. Quan has requested legislation from the authorities, so possibly this is a contributing factor in the SEC's tardiness to follow South Korea's example and issue a severe rebuke. Although it's difficult to assess what appropriate looks like before authorities have put existing rules into effect, proper regulations wouldn't always be awful. On October 14, 2022, according to the Block's tweet, Mango Markets Community set to approve $47 million deal with Hacker. The majority of the Mango Markets Society is in support of reaching a settlement with the hacker who robbed $114 million through the company's DeFi protocol. In accordance with the terms of the proposed agreement, the hacker will retain $47 million in tokens as a bug compensation and return around $67 million of the coins. The project will utilize treasury money to wipe off any outstanding bad debt, and after the share of tokens has been refunded, it will not seek any criminal investigations, according to the governance vote. The hacker spent $10 million carrying out the assault, therefore that amount may be subtracted from the actual prize. 4.6 million tokens are voting against the agreement in the governance vote, while 119 million support it. When the voting concludes early on October 15, it will have reached quorum, suggesting it will probably pass. The Mango Markets Group established this governance vote, and it does not appear that the hacker cast a vote from the primary wallets connected to the incident. The hacker had already generated a governance vote and cast votes on it using 33 million of the hacked tokens prior to this vote. In accordance with the agreement, the hacker would also return a portion of the token soon after the voting began as a sign of good faith. On-chain data indicates that the tokens, which were valued at slightly under $8 million, have indeed been refunded. According to the block research, if the bug reward is approved, it will rank among the biggest bug bounty programs in cryptocurrency history. However, it's uncertain if the agreement would be effective in terms of skipping criminal prosecution. On Solana, there is a lending and trading platform called Mango Markets. The hack was made possible by manipulating the price of the native Mango token of Mango Market. Blockchain oracles, which supply blockchains with information on token prices, were manipulated to make this happen. The breach ranked as the sixth largest decentralized finance exploitation in history, only slightly below the $130 million hack of Cream Finance. That's it for our today's video. So, what can you say about the news? Let us know about it in the comments section down below. Thanks for tuning in to CryptoLink. We are always excited to provide you with news and updates about cryptocurrency and if you like this video, please click the like button. See you on the next one.